Module 2, Lesson 1, Lecture 1.1, Setting Up Your Environment. So this entire module is about the C programming language, C, C++. The reason for this is because Arduino is programmed in C++. Uh, really C, but a little bit of C++. So this module is just about C, teaching you C. Now, because of that, you know, we're going to go through C, and actually we won't be talking in this module much about Arduino specifically. We'll just be talking about the C language. And of course, this will all apply. But I'm assuming that your environment, uh, the, the, the environment may, may not be Arduino. It, this, this whole module could generically be on a desktop, laptop, or anything. It doesn't have to be Arduino. Uh, and in fact, our basic, our starting example, the starting program, the program you always start with when you're learning C, is hello world, okay? Just prints hello world to the screen. Now, notice I mentioned screen. Arduinos don't have screens. So I'm already assuming that you are using a desktop or a laptop. So I just want to describe for you how you would set up your desktop laptop environment in order to run these programs, to work with the programs that we're gonna, um, we're gonna talk about. So we've already talked about the Ar Arduino IDE, but that won't be useful for, uh, for, a, for, for instance, this program where it prints hello world, because that print doesn't work. The printf pro statement doesn't work uh, properly in, uh, on an Arduino because there's no screen. So let's just talk about uh, setting up the environment on a Windows machine, a Mac, or a Linux box. <clears throat> so what you're going to need, basic things you're going to need, you're going to need a text editor and a compiler. Now, text, notice that the Arduino IDE puts that all together into one tool, right? We need the same things on a, uh, on a Windows machine or whatever platform you're going to use. Actually, I prefer Linux for this type of thing, but, uh, you know, whatever, whatever machine, doesn't matter. Now, text editor can be any text editor. But, I mean, if you want to, you could use Word. But you generally want to use a uh, programmer's text editor, one that recognizes programming constructs. So there are plenty of those around. Uh, I use GNU tools. GNU tools are free, free tools, <laughs> free, like f just great, free and open source and everything. So I use GNU tools. So I'm giving you links to where you can get GNU, appropriate GNU tools. You don't have to use these, but they're nice. So um, Emacs Text Editor, I always use that. Uh, that's just a text editor. You can type your code in there. GCC C Compiler. Uh, you can download the C Compiler, which you're going to need, C, C++ Compiler. And also the debugger, GDB, you can download that too. Actually, we are, we're not going to talk too much about the debugger, so you don't have to worry about that. But the text editor and the compiler are useful. Actually, um, Emacs is a text editor that I've used since way back. Nowadays, I use Notepad++, which is also a GNU tool. Notepad++. You know Notepad, it comes with your um, machine. Notepad++ is much nicer. And you can use that too. It's also on GNU.org. So you can get some text editor. And, uh, and a C compiler. That C compiler GCC is, is great, and it's open source, and it's great. The text editor, Emacs, or Notepad++, they both understand C constructs, so they'll indent for you properly, color things on the screen for you properly, and all that. So they're nice. You can run on Windows. Uh, I would say Mac OS and Linux are even easier, because Mac OS is actually a Linux. It's, uh, it's actually a version of Linux underneath. So you don't have to install any of this. GCC and uh, GCC comes pre-installed on those platforms. Windows, you have to do it separately. That's fine. Now, another way to go, rather than using uh, GCC and Emacs, is to use a, another integrated development environment, Eclipse. Eclipse is a common one. You can use any one you want, but you could use Eclipse. It's a common one, open source. Now, the difference is, see, the way I write my code, I do everything at the command line. So I'll go to my text editor, type in the code, save the file. Then I'll go to the command line and say, and type in the command, the compile command directly, GCC, give the name of my file. And I'll show you that in the next slide. So that's the way I do it. But a lot of people like to use these IDEs, like the Arduino IDE, that packages everything in one tool. So you type the code into the IDE, and in the same IDE, you click a button that compiles the code. Or in Eclipse, it's called building the code, right? So people like to use IDEs like Eclipse, and you can download that and use that too. That's fine. It puts all the tools together in one nice GUI, nice graphic user interface, just like Arduino IDE. Uh, you need to run Java virtual environment. So Java runtime environment, you have to have Java installed on your machine because the Eclipse IDE is written in Java. But that's also true of the Arduino IDE, so it shouldn't be a problem. 
Uh, you can download it from here or Google it and you can find it. Uh, also, besides using Eclipse, you could also use Microsoft Visual Studio. That's not free. Uh, you have to pay money, but you could use that too. Eclipse is nice and free. Okay, so here's an example of uh, writing the code and compiling it and running it the way I do it. So I do it, this is actually what I'm doing in here, I'm doing it in Linux. So I'm running it in the Linux, I, use, I do everything at the command line. So the top window that you see up there, that is my Emacs window. That's my text editor. And you can see in there I have written my code. That's my program, print hello world. And uh, I've saved it. So I save it to a, a directory. Then I go to the command line, which is a different window. And you can see that in the bottom, compile and run. Where there I compile the code. You can see I type GCC. That calls the compiler. GCC gave the name of the, code, the program. Dash O, and then after the dash O, dash O is short for output. Uh, it gives a file name that I want the, the executable to be. I call it hello. So dash O, hello. So after I do that command, in my local directory, there will be a program, a file called hello. And that is my executable. So if I type ls, since this is Linux, ls gives me a directory listing. It shows me what's in the directory, and I see there's a program called hello. Note that even though I typed ls here, if you were doing this on a Windows machine, you would type dir. Okay, on, in the command prompt, uh, in the CMD window, you type dir, it does the same thing. If you're on a, a Mac, then you would also type ls because it's also a Linux box. If you uh, open up the terminal, you type ls also. So, uh, so I get the directory and I type dot slash hello. Uh, you would think you could just type hello to just run the code, but you have to type dot slash to tell it, that it to look in the local directory. So you type dot slash hello, it takes a hello program, runs it, and prints hello world, and that's that. So that's you want to have that whole tool chain installed. Uh, you can use the GNU tool chain that I, I talked about, Eclipse, GCC. You can go with IDE, with an IDE like Eclipse, uh, not Eclipse, e Emacs and GCC. You can go with an IDE like Eclipse. You can use Notepad++, whatever text editor you want. But get, uh, get something like this program running. So you want to install that whole chain uh, top to bottom so that you can just take a piece of code, write it, save it, and execute it uh, like you see there. Thank you.